Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I want to talk today about Airbnbs and how I believe they are going to be one of the factors that increases the likeliness of a downturn in the real estate market, okay? I think I've got some ideas that not a lot of people are talking about. So without further ado, let's do this. Okay, here we go. So I noticed something about four years ago that was sort of blowing my mind. And again, four years ago, four, I was starting to get ready for an economic uh, downturn. I was watching what was happening with the banks, how they weren't wanting to lend to, uh, to each other. I saw a lot of tension and grinding, gears grinding together in the economics of our country. And so I was starting to pre prepare for that. And what, one thing that I noticed that was scaring me was the amount of uh, people that were buying into the Airbnb uh, investments. I was watching people uh, just dive right into real estate that had never owned a rental property before and they dove into rentals because they wanted to use them for Airbnbs. Now, four years ago, Airbnbs were popping up everywhere and it was all the buzz, right? Now you look back and go, well, Ninja, you're wrong. The real estate market kept running up. Well, I would have never thought that we would see actual, actual 0% Fed funds rate. That zero rate was a big deal. I never would have thought, even after the crisis in Lehman Brothers, we weren't at zero. We were right above it. I would never have foreseen this, right? There were a lot of people exiting the markets and it was a big deal. Uh, the biggest thing that I saw was that people, like I said, never owned a rent rental and they said, we gotta get in, this is a cash cow. Everybody was bragging about how much they can make. And it's true, it was real money and it still is today. Uh, the Airbnb market uh, is starting to wake back up after everything was shut down and they're out there in full force. People are getting out and, and renting, right? But I want to explain that that is not always going to be the case. When an economy uh, uh, resets or when it goes into just, let's just talk about just a recession, there's less dollars that can be spent on travel. People constrict their spending and the Airbnb industry has not been through a recession yet, okay? I remember just six months ago, a lot of uh, Airbnb owners sharing their stories with me, saying, I don't know if we're gonna be able to, if we're gonna lose this house because we don't have any clients. Nobody's coming in because the whole country was shut down, right? Well, they got a taste of it. Well, a lot of them had businesses, they took out loans and they kept it going. Well, back four years ago, I was, I was literally watching people overextend themselves on real estate that they couldn't afford based on the Airbnb revenue. Now, it worked out when they bought it. Sure enough, the revenue was there, right? But it's not always going to be there. And what I believe is gonna happen is that in this next downturn, this is gonna be larger than a recession. And the reason why we know that is going to be true is because the buildup was worse than the buildup before any other recession in the last 50 years, okay? The amount of money being printed was insane. And we're starting to see that with heavy inflation in all kinds of uh, aspects of the country, like food, fuel, uh, housing prices, stock valuations, even cryptocurrency. Everything's getting more and more expensive, which means you have less and less disposable income to spend on vacations, right? I foresee, because we're already seeing cities that are clamping down on the amount of Airbnbs that can be available in any given neighborhood, right? Or available in any given neighborhood. So we're already seeing lots of regulation there. And we're also seeing, because of the shutdown, a lot of hotels that are starting to go into bankruptcy that are having issues because they, they weren't able to fill the, the amount of rooms. Well, they're getting bought up by larger conglomerates. And what those larger conglomerates can do is they can drastically change the cost in any given city or town, how much it costs to stay overnight when you're on vacation. And what I see in this next downturn, we're gonna start seeing hotels drastically cut the cost of a room to stay overnight. And what will happen is these Airbnbs, as nice as they are to stay in, they're not gonna be able to compete. You see, right now, there's a lot of places people go, why wouldn't I stay at an Airbnb? It's the same cost as a hotel, right? And it has more amenities or I have more freedom, right? Well, the problem is 
if the hotel is close to the price or even a little bit less, and some people go, hey, I'd rather pay the, the extra price for the Airbnb because of the freedom, the peace and quiet, all of that, that that it affords. But all of a sudden, if the hotel now costs half the price, a lot of people are gonna start thinking about it and going, well, yeah, I'd love to stay in an Airbnb, but I can't deny, we're gonna save a lot of money for the next four nights if we just stay in a hotel. And, you know, hey, there's a maid coming in every night and morning and, and making the bed. So why not? Let's just go for it. And it's more centrally located to where we want to go, especially in metropolitan areas. And I foresee a massive amount of Airbnbs having to be sold because they were bought not properly. And I can guarantee you there's a lot of people that during this downturn took out extra debt on their Airbnb properties because not only was there a lack of income coming in, but because interest rates had dropped so much, they went, hey, this is a perfect opportunity. Let's refi the house. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take a little bit extra out to pay some payments or to, um, you know, have like a nest egg in case or to fix it up, you know, or hey, let's just take it as a reward for us. And now there's, a, there's even more debt on those properties, which means if we have any m more of a jolt in the economy where people are affected and I mean, high fuel prices are going to um, play into that as well. There's going to be a lot of Airbnbs that are out in remote areas that people aren't going to be driving to because, hey, they can't afford it because they've got a big SUV and it costs so darn much to drive the darn thing that they're not going to be there. And and it sounds funny because I'm going to get this in the comment section. Everybody's like, you're wrong. In my town, it's this. In my town, I'm like, no, no, no. Stop thinking today. Stop thinking next month. I want you to think next year. That's what successful investors do. They don't think about today or tomorrow, they think about next year because so few people think that far out. When you can plan that far out, you will be very successful, all right? So I hope you guys got something out of this. We're just sort of ranting and raving, talking through these issues, but this is where I see the Airbnb industry going. I don't see it as a good thing right now. It doesn't mean it's gonna completely die, but I think it's definitely gonna go through a full collapse cycle, and then it's gonna to have to come back out. And those people that are ready to start picking up those Airbnbs that are amazing uh, properties on amazing um, locate in amazing locations are gonna really, really crush it in this next cycle. We're talking, you know, three, four, five year cycle in real estate. Okay guys, with that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.